Hey Jordan, can you shoot a wedding film with only one lens? Yeah. Do you care to expound on that? Oh yeah, sure. After the intro. Why are you acting so weird, do I? <gasps> Hello everybody, Jordan Nelson here. If you are new, we talk about the art and business of wedding filmmaking and video creation in general. So if you're all about that, consider subscribing. So the question of this video is, can you shoot a wedding film with one single lens? The answer is yes, you can, but obviously it's not preferable. So let's go through kind of the obvious preferability of your lens setup. So number one, you want multiple lenses at multiple focal lengths that you own, so buying more lenses. So the pros of this are having lenses that you can use for any application that you want and any type of shot that you want, you can have the right focal length for that. And they are your lenses for you to use whenever you would like. Now the cons of that, lenses are really expensive, especially good lenses, lenses that you want to invest to for long periods of time they cost a ton of money, but they're also so, so important. So a lot of people say whatever you make in weddings, just reinvest it back in your business. Now, if that makes sense for your life and your finances and you're able to do that, like that is a smart decision. You wanna invest long-term in your business. Now for us, we have a ton of student loans right now. So for us to go and reinvest into equipment all the time, there are things that we need to pay for right now. There are expenses that are more important and are higher on the priority list than investing in some camera gear. I just can't make that work as easily as I'd like to. Like I would love to buy a second, third, fourth, fifth lens. There may be some financial barriers that you also have that would keep you from purchasing more lenses. So that's a big con of just going to buy more lenses. Another practical con of shooting with multiple lenses is that you're gonna to have to take the time to think about which lens would work best in a certain situation. And if you're using a glide cam or a gimbal or something, then you're gonna to have to rebalance because it's gonna throw off the balance of whatever you had going on. So you're gonna to have to think through when you're going to change lenses and when you're gonna rebalance, stuff like that. So that's a kind of just something else you have to do and think through and it's gonna take more time. But also the benefit of having a second lens is definitely, I think, worth it. And number two here would be to rent multiple lenses for whatever application that you would need. So before the wedding, you could rent a lens or two extra on top of what you own. Now the pros for this are the same as buying new lenses. You'll have lenses for whatever you need, but then also it's not nearly as expensive as purchasing. But the cons of this are that eventually as you continue to rent and rent and rent and rent, that expense is going to go up and up and up and up. You're just gonna be spending more money on stuff that you don't even own. And then another con is the same. You're gonna have to be changing lenses out and rebalancing and refiguring uh, the equipment that you have throughout the day. So you're just gonna need to think through that. And then number three, just using one lens. So one pro of that is that it's not nearly as expensive is buying multiple lenses. You could just have your one go-to lens. And then another pro is that you don't have to think about having to rebalance anything or changing lenses or which lenses would work best for what situation and uh, trying to always think through that. You can just have your one lens that you use all the time. It's not really something you have to think about. You just work with the one that you have. So those are a couple pros. It's just more streamlined and simple. But of course, the big con is that you don't have the flexibility to get all the shots that you probably wanna get and you're not gonna be able to get the best shots in certain scenarios. So you think of the, the wedding ceremony. If you wanna get a close-up of the couple up there in the stage, you're really not gonna be able to get close enough to get some, you know, medium shots of, you know, like the chest and above, just kind of really get in there. You're not gonna have the 70 to 200 millimeter, and I hope that's not the one lens that you'd be using. You'd want something wider, but there may be some shots that are downright impossible to get without multiple lenses and longer focal lengths. So what do I do? I use a Sony FE 28mm 2.0 lens. That is the one lens that I use. Now, why do I use that lens in particular? So for me, it was the most affordable prime lens that had a fast f-stop. It was a Sony lens, so I knew it would be totally compatible with the Sony a7 III, and at the time, it's like, I just wanted to make sure everything would work together. I was going the whole new Sony system, so I wasn't really sure. I didn't want to risk it with, you know, other third-party lenses that probably would have worked great, but I just wanted to play it as safe as I could. And it had a wide enough focal length. So a 28 millimeter was wide enough, but it wasn't so wide, like a 16 millimeter. Even if I got close to something, it would still be too wide. Like, it was kind of in that weird, wide, medium kind of zone. It's kind of a weird focal length. At the time, I didn't know all the different options that were out there and what was compatible or not. I just wanted to find something that met those simple criteria. And one advantage too with the Sony a7 III is that it's a full frame camera, so I can use the APS-C crop mode to punch into more of like a 41 millimeter-ish focal length. So I can punch in a little bit more to that medium focal length, which is actually a huge plus. It's kind of two lenses in one. But regardless, I'm still just using 
this one single lens. Now I have my reasons for only using one single lens. A lot of it is the, the financial reason. I don't want to keep renting and renting and building that into the pricing model. I like the price that I'm at right now. So that's, that's one thing that's kind of, I've been wrestling with is should I rent a lens every time and then just build that into pricing. But then I don't love the logistics of having to make sure the lens is is there and there's nothing wrong with it and that it's compatible and everything works and i just really don't like dealing with renting stuff and having to return it and then having to get a new one the next time the more weddings you do the bigger of a hassle that is and especially this is kind of a side thing for me like i have the full-time job i have all the other stuff going on i have grad school going on just another thing to add into having to rent a lens you know every other weekend it's just not something that um I just want to do, you know, I, and I absolutely could. It, it could make the wedding films. It could give me more, you know, more shots that I can get and type of things I can do. But um, yeah, that's just a, a decision I made at this point. And as I scale up, hopefully in the future, it'll be a lot easier for me to do something like that. But um, right now, in my season of life, I don't want to have to keep doing that over and over. I know a lot of you probably disagree. You're just like, no, Jordan, it's worth it. You should be, you should be doing this, but it's just a call I've made. But maybe you are in a place where one single lens is really your only option. Maybe you're just starting out. You only have one lens and you don't really have any room to build any rental lenses into your pricing package. And you don't have enough money to go and purchase a nice new lens. It costs two grand or something like that. So if that's the case, if you're doing what I'm doing, how can you make a really good wedding film? How can you just use one single lens to make a wedding film that is awesome. So really we wanna think about how to overcome the con that we talked about of having that one lens. And that big con is not having the flexibility to get all those different types of shots. So let's talk about that. So number one, just realize and recognize that you're not gonna be able to do everything that you want to do. I would love to have the 70 to 200 millimeters somewhere off to the side to be able to get into those, those close-ups during the ceremony or something like that. That would be great, but that's something that I have to recognize as I walk up to a wedding day that's not a capability that I have. So I need to think creatively about how to make an awesome wedding film without having that. Number two, just move your feet. For most of the day, you can get up and close to the couple, to the action that's happening, to what's going on. You can get in there pretty close and vary the distance that you are from the subject or wherever you're shooting. So moving close up to the couple, getting some medium shots, getting some wide shots some establishing, just you can move around and vary how close you are to the subject. So you don't have to rely so much on what the focal length of your lens is and still get awesome shots at every one of those distances. So move your feet. Our right, number three, I suggest having a gimbal or a glide cam or something that you can get a good amount of camera movement. And that's going to help if you only have one lens. This is going to make your wedding film more dynamic and immersive for whoever's watching it. Moving closer to the subject, you're moving away, you're doing different parallax movements, maybe like a pedestal movement, you're close, you're far away, you're doing medium. You have all kinds of different variations. So you want to make sure that you're doing that during the wedding day. And yeah, I really do suggest having that movement within your shots. It's just going to give it that feel where more is happening, especially if you can't vary those focal lengths. And then quick tip number four, don't exclusively choose longer focal lengths. You want to go wider so you can get, you know, closer up to the couple and get those really wide shots. You want to have those options and you want to be able to have really smooth gimbal or glide cam shots. You want to have that wide focal length for that. So really to cap this off, if your question is, can I shoot a wedding film with only one single lens? The answer is absolutely. You can make something awesome. That's all I have been doing. You just need to be creative and moving your feet and varying your distances and doing things are going to give the impression that you do have multiple focal lengths. So don't be discouraged if you can only afford one lens or that's all you have. Go use it. You can make something awesome. So go do that. And then maybe here in the future, renting more lenses, purchasing more lenses, you're off to the races because that obviously is preferable. I don't want you to hear me say, yeah, stick with your one lens, even though you have the capability to do more. Just know that you are not shackled by just having that one lens. You have all the creativity in the world and all the freedom in the world to do what you want with your wedding films. So don't sweat it too much. Go out there, create something, serve the couple. Hope that was helpful, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please go ahead and click that subscribe button. I have a lot more videos just like this on the channel related both to wedding filmmaking and video creation in general. So if you're into that, consider subscribing. Thank you so much again for watching, everybody. See you in the next video.